Well, if our lifestyles and diets are making us sick, then something has to change, folks. Well, what about starting simple and making it sound fabulous? Kale, California Dreamin' Soup, for example. Lentil Me Entertain You Soup. Or what about the Beat Goes On Borscht? Now, they are all the creations of my guest tonight, Alina Fuhrman. She is founder of Supalina. She's author of Supalina's Soup Cleanse. And she's the guru of the soup cleansing trend. You see her there, and she's in the studio with me right now. She's laughing. I mean, it's good. You must be healthy because you're smiling. <laughs> Well, it's all about soup, you know? It's all about soup. Well, it's all about it's, soup. You, know, you, you say that soup are your magic medicine. It is. All it right. really is. What, what, explain that to me. All right. Well, first of all, soup is, there's nothing new about soup. We've all loved soups since, you know, since you were a kid, right? You've always loved soup. What, like chicken noodle soup, right? Well, or... A little bit of a, with a twist. No, with a, <laughs> with a, little a little bit of a twist. A little vegan twist there, Yes, yeah? vegan twist. Right. Because you were talking about diabetes, right? right? There is a lot of issues these days with all kinds of diseases. And people are trying to understand what it is, what makes us sick, right? And the, what I realized when I was going through my health opportunity, which I call a health opportunity, is that we make ourselves sick. Because we are making the choice of eating foods that are not that great for us. Uh, your, your health opportunity, yep. you had breast cancer. I had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, I mean, well, I don't want to get into all the specifics of yes. that, but, but you say that researching into the treatments for that mm -hmm. um, led you to the world of magic soups, if exactly. you will. Exactly. Tell me a little bit. How, how did that happen? Well, um, when people get diagnosed with chronic conditions, whether it's cancer or diabetes or any other chronic condition. Doctors usually roll out the red carpet of treatments. That's what I call it. I live in LA, so everything is about red carpet, right? Yeah. So, um, and, <laughs> and the red carpet of treatments usually involves a lot of drugs and things that might alleviate the symptom, but is not gonna eliminate the root cause. And that's really the key of any chronic condition, yeah. is what is it that brought you to that point? Now, now you know, though, that uh, physicians are going to hear this, and mm -hmm. you know, they're going to raise the flag, and they're going to say, yeah, but um, this is not medicine that you're talking it about. It is. Actually, it is. I and mean, there's a lot of uh, scientific proof behind it. Because so what I based my recipes and what I base my research on is not just the traditional medicine, but yeah. also Chinese medicine and Ayurveda and homeopathy. Yeah. And homeopathy has been around since before the, what Western now medicine. we call Western medicine, right, came on board. And, you know, we can go back in history and discuss about how with the emergence of the Medical Medical Association, homeopathy became not so cool. And, but now all of the so-called alternative treatments um, are making a comeback. And the reason why they're making a comeback is because people are looking for other ways to heal because just taking medicine is not good enough. There is room for that because it alleviates the symptom, like I said, but you want to get to the root cause and chronic conditions call for that. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. how much of this is, is trendy? I mean, you do, you know, you live in Los Angeles. Oh, uh, yes, I do. And, <laughs> and, and I was reading, um, you have a lot of people um, in Hollywood who like the, the soup cleansing di diet. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow, Alicia Silverstone, uh, Jenny Garth. Um, I mean, this is going to sound like it's all, you know, kind of a flash in the pan trend thing that you see all the time in LA. It's not really, because again, soup has a cent centuries long tradition. And we've always, you know, for, for generations, people have always looked for ways to heal. Okay, and you can, you know, you can read history books and stories about grandmothers in the villages putting things that are healing vegetables and herbs and spices into the pots sure. and making these healing soups. Because when you don't feel well, you know, you want that comfort, you want the love. So I brought it to the 21st century. I really didn't do anything particularly. I mean, I created new recipes, but I brought soup into the 21st century okay. by eliminating creams and nuts and soy and gluten and all the things that are making people and sick, you also, allergies, and sugar. You also <laughs> brought soup I into did. the studio yep, tonight. Yep. And just for that, we're gonna love you. Now, <laughs> uh, what, what, what did you bring in tonight? Okay, tonight, uh, this is sweet coconut thai oh my. Sweet coconut thai oh my. Oh my, okay. with no sugar, okay? So no the sugar. sweetness 
from in the soup comes from sweet potato, and sweet potato is actually a really great carb. One of, and one of my favorite foods. It's there one of the go. most perfect foods, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now there's a spoon there. What does that mean? Am, am I allowed to taste yeah, it? Yeah, that's oh, for okay. you. Okay, I'm going to stand up here. I know this is totally unorthodox, but. Let's see. <laughs> Mm. What do you think? It's different, right? Well, I mean, it it, it tastes like it would have sugar, though. Well, because I mean, of it, sweet it's potato. Delicious. Because of sweet potato. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Now, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely eat this. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, can people, I know people can order the soups, all right? In Los Angeles, right, yeah. In Los Angeles. Now, can, can people make these soups? Because, I mean, you've got great recipes. Mm -hmm. Um, some are exotic, I will say. I mean, some are not the easiest at, at first. But can people actually make these mm -hmm. in, their, in their kitchen and afford to do oh, that? Oh, yes, and that's the thing. Soup is very affordable because you can, and, you know, ac across the world, I mean, in the United States, unfortunately, we have a lot of pesticide-ridden vegetables and right. GMOs. But you go across the world in the, in the countries, the poorer countries, they don't have that. So they actually have the basic great ingredients for the soup. Yeah. And the recipes that I have in my book um, come from around the world. I mean, the ingredients come from around the world because I've traveled as a journalist around the world. So I love to bring those influences mm -hmm. from the Middle East, from Thailand, from China, from Vietnam, from Russia, you mm -hmm. know, France, that everywhere. Is, yeah, and, yeah. And that is great. I, I know the New York Times wrote about you and said that um, souping is the new juicing. Yep. What, okay, what does that mean? Because, I mean, I, I've tried uh, juicing. I mean, I, yeah. I think it's great, yeah. too. But um, why is souping better to juicing? Okay, so here's the thing. So what's happened with juicing, and juicing is great for a short period of time, but what's happened with juicing, because it became such a big trend, you know, people, you know, not everybody likes an all-green juice, right? And that's really what the healing powers of the all-green juice. So all of the trendy juiceries started adding the mangoes and the pineapples and the sugary fruits into those uh, smoothies or juices. Mm -hmm. And so you're back to where you came from. Right. So you are into the sugar trend. And so you're just masking it. You're covering up the color and it's green, but you have so much sugar in that juice uh -huh. that you're getting the glycemics up uh, and it, down. It, and it's kind of like drinking Kool-Aid back in the 1970s, right? For, now, it's better, it's way better, but it's not giving you the health boost that you know, you're looking for in that particular juice trend. Um, you, you, you write about soup cleansing. Mm -hmm. Now, when I hear cleansing, I mean, yeah. it doesn't conjure up the, you know, the most positive <laughs> images here. I mean, more than just, you know, carrots and lettuce. Um, is it, are we talking about cleansing here? Is that what this okay. is about? So, as you know, obviously, cleansing... And we've got, we've got half, a, half a minute. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, cleansing is a trend, but I suggest that people cleanse as a kickstart to a healthier lifestyle. Okay. Because when you want to become healthy, you don't know where to start. So by bringing and introducing like a three day or five day cleanse, that gives you an introduction to what do you do to get on a healthy path. Yeah. And soups are great. They're easy. I mean, what you brought in tonight you was delicious. You won't be hungry. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you very much too. You're welcome. Alina Fuhrman, thank you very much. Um, the woman who is known as the guru, Soup Alina. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we're almost done now with the day. Like every day, this is a work in progress. We want to know what you think. Share your ideas on Twitter at DW News or Brent Goff TV. Please remember to use the hashtag the day. Well, for all of us here in Berlin, thanks for watching. And remember, whatever happens between now and then, tomorrow is another day. We'll see you then.